We were looking at the seven super deacons yesterday, and among them, most representative of them was Stephen and also Philip. Stephen gets the focus at the end of chapter 6, and we find out that his ministry was so effective. Of course, he was filled with the Holy Spirit and wisdom, so it turns out he's a good teacher. As a matter of fact, we will find that to be so as we look at his message today, at his sermon, if you will. And people were listening to his messages, and then they brought an accusation against him that he is blaspheming Moses and God. Blasphemous words against Moses and, wait a minute, Moses isn't God. You can't blaspheme a human being. But anyway, that's, that's, maybe that, 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 that's a flag right there, right? I mean, they're revering a man in such a way that to speak against him is to blaspheme. That kind of language you use for God alone, but blaspheming Moses and God. And also that he was speaking against the temple, against the temple. So these two accusations were being brought against Stephen. And Stephen was brought before that, now pretty familiar, council of the rulers of the Jews. And in in their presence, (laughs) truth to power, Stephen is preaching this majestic sermon. And that's what chapter 7 is. At the end of chapter 7, to give away the conclusion, um, warning, spoiler alert, Stephen gives his life in a beautiful martyrdom, a Christ-like martyrdom. But in between, uh, this sermon that cost cost, um, Stephen his life, we're going to take a look at that today. Let's look at the conclusion, okay? At the end of chapter 7, toward the end, verse 51, You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous one, whom you have now betrayed and murdered. You have received the law as delivered by angels and did not keep it. So he just lays it down before them with no fear, but full of love. Ah, just like King Jesus reaching out to them to the very end. And his conclusion is that Jesus is the righteous one of whom the entire Old Testament was speaking. So what was his sermon about? Well, that's the conclusion of that sermon. But in a nutshell, it is this. It is the story of God's faithfulness in bringing about his loving, redemptive story in spite of and through the faithlessness of his people. It is God's faithfulness displayed through the story of the faithlessness of his people. God's faithfulness in the faithlessness of his people, of God's people. That's the story. How God unfolds his loving, saving plan through all the faithless acts of all of his people. And, as you might expect, it centers, it, it just it focuses toward the end of the sermon on Moses and the law and the temple, temple building, okay? Moses and the law and the temple building. When Stephen comes to Moses, he points to the passage in Deuteronomy chapter 18 where Moses said that God would send a person like him, a prophet like him. In Acts chapter 3, verse 22, we find that the way that the apostles interpreted Deuteronomy 18 was that, that that is all about Jesus. If you read the language of how Stephen speaks about Moses here in his own sermon, the language sounds just so purely messianic. It's all about Jesus. It calls Moses a redeemer. Hint, hint, right? And then he focuses on the temple and says, even from the very beginning, the temple was never meant to house God. God's true temple transcends any human being. It's not even worthy to be a footstool. 
And that's all from the scriptures, pointing to the fact that there is another fulfillment of this temple. And that conclusion was Jesus. And though not as clearly laid out in this, in this sermon, throughout the understanding of the New Testament, we see that Jesus is seen as that temple. The fulfillment of the physical building is the beautiful body of King Jesus. Yeah. King Jesus himself as he came incarnate. King Jesus as his body is in the church. So, I'm sorry, I don't mean to just kind of bring in all the, these other theological concepts. Into, but at minimum, Stephen is saying, Moses and the law is a shadow. The temple is a pointer. And you have rejected the one to whom they point. And the people couldn't stand it. The people couldn't stand it. And they picked up stones to stone him. And Stephen's life is crowned in a death that resembled King Jesus with the very words of Jesus from the cross on his lips. King Jesus, into your hands I commit my spirit. And forgive them. His heart and his lips still crying out love for the very ones who were stoning him just as Jesus' lips did from the cross. Ah, so beautiful. So beautiful. You know what it says? That when he began to preach, that everybody could see that his face was like that of an angel. And no wonder. Because that face was beholding the King Jesus as he stood for him while Stephen was being stoned to death. Jesus stood up and saw and observed his loved one. Beautiful. Beautiful. May we receive God's word in this kind of a powerful way so that we may, with that powerful testimony, live a Christ-like martyr's death day by day to his majestic glory and the magnification of that name. Let's pray. Oh, there are so many wonderful riches here in Stephen's sermon. Thank you so much, Lord, for these messages preserved for us in the book of Acts. The sermons of the book of Acts are such a rich meditation. They are such rich meditations. Lord, and as we have meditated roughly, just roughly, on Stephen's majestic message, oh Lord, help us to see the beauty of King Jesus that he saw, and the sight of which was more than worth laying down his life for. Ah, may we always have someone to live for and die for. You have given us such purpose, such privilege. We celebrate you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before the throne of God above, I have a strong and perfect plea, a great high priest. Whose name is love, whoever lives and pleads for me. My name is graven on his hands, my name is written on his heart. I know that while in heaven he stands, no tongue can bid me thence depart, no tongue can bid me thence depart. When Satan tempts me to despair And tells me of the guilt within How would I look and see him there Who made an end of all my sin Because the sinless Savior died My sinful soul is counted free for God the just is
is satisfied to look on him and pardon me to look on him and, and pardon me behold behold him there the risen lamb my perfect spotless righteousness the great untrainable I am the king of glory and of grace one with himself I cannot die my soul is purchased by his blood my life is here with Christ on high with Christ my Savior one with himself one with himself I cannot die My soul is purchased by his blood My life is here With Christ on high With Christ my Savior and my God With Christ my Savior and my God